key, that leaves us with our fourth and final key. And our final key is we need to know the mode of transportation. Because the mode of transportation can, can slightly change what rules that we have to follow. For instance, if we have a ground shipment, and I've used that term several times, ground just means highway and rail, you would follow what are called the DOT hazmat regulations. And they have rules for how big the packages can be, how to properly package it, what kind of marks and labels, as well as things like employee training. If you ship lithium batteries, you are a hazmat employee and you have to get trained every three years for the ground regulations. Now, if you ship something via airplane, you're actually getting pulled into a different set of regulations at that point. You get pulled in what are called the IATA dangerous goods regulations. They come out every single year. And the, the main key here is that when you ship things on an airplane, you're typically gonna have to follow a little more stringent rules. They take air shipments much more seriously, so there's a couple extra hoops that you kinda have to jump through when you ship things on an airplane. Um, it's not a ton more, but it is some extra requirements. And I will also, in terms of training standards, if you ship things on an airplane instead of every three years, they want you to get trained every two years. And that leaves us with vessel shipments. And with vessel shipments, you would actually follow a different set of rules for those. It's called the IMDG code. It stands for the International Maritime Dangerous Goods Code. It comes out every other year. And the good news, at least with the IMDG code, is they're pretty much harmonized with the DOT, at least for lithium battery shipments. So, you know, if you prepare a lithium battery shipment to go via ground, it, you can usually just take it and just kind of plop it onto the vessel because they follow basically the same rules. I will say, for the fully regulated size batteries, the big ones, there are a few small differences um, in terms of you know, ground versus vessel rules, but for the most part, they are on the same page. So kind of the, the big mode of transport to be kind of concerned with is air transport because they always have a few extra things that you gotta do. And that's it, that's everything I kind of wanted to discuss today. Um, it's just sort of giving you a jumping off point just so that you understand that there's there's not just one set of rules that, that apply to lithium batteries. It really depends on each of these four keys. You know, if you change the type of battery or the size of the battery or whether or not you're shipping it with equipment, guess what? You have different rules that you have to follow for each of those scenarios, which does make it a little more tricky to kind of ship out lithium batteries. So with that, I am going to kind of turn it over to Ron. If you're new to shipping lithium batteries, there are four key fundamentals that you need command of to do it right. Grab the ultimate guide to those four keys from lion.com slash four keys. Then watch our full video on YouTube to find out what lithium battery shippers need to know for 2024.